now that we have the ability to aim at things, the next thing we want to be able to do is actually interact with objects in our environment, because currently we can just point the camera at them. To do this, we're going to set up a line trace system, which essentially draws a line between two points in space and will report back to Unreal if it hits anything as it travels between those two points. So to do this, we're going to set it up inside of the third person character. To find your third person character, make sure you have a third person content installed. Go to your content folder and you can just type in third to locate the third person character. Inside of the third person character, head to the event graph and find a bit of empty space down near the bottom of the graph. I'm just going to create a quick shortcut so we can test it using a keyboard input. Choose any keyboard input you want. I'm going to choose keyboard input F. To find this, you search for keyboard in the blueprint and you will have this list of keyboard events. Down here you can fit, pick any key you want from the keyboard, so I'm just going to pick F. When the player presses this, I'm going to create a line, line trace by channel. Be careful when you're choosing the options here. Sometimes it will select the multi-line trace by channel by default. This isn't what we want to use here today. You want just this single line trace by channel right at the top of the collision list. This looks like quite an intimidating blueprint node. It has several inputs down the side, but the only important ones are the start and end position here. You can leave everything else pretty much as it is. Just a note. By default, the line trace will be invisible unless you change the draw debug type here. I recommend that you set this to the for duration option. For duration just means that it will be visible for a specific number of seconds. If you want to change that, those options are here under the drop down arrow. Five seconds. Just leave it as it is. Set the draw debug type to for duration. And now we're going to set a start and end point for this line trace. The start point is going to be the player camera. This is what we see out of. And we want to draw the line from the center of the camera out towards the crosshair in the middle of the screen. So to do that, the first location therefore has to be the camera. Grab the camera, drag it onto the blueprint to get a reference to it. And if we want to know where it is, we need to get the location. In this case, get the world location. Where is the camera in the current level? If you plug that into the start location and compile this blueprint, we can now test it to make sure all of this is working. If you press your interact key now, you should see a lot of lines being appeared almost at random. But what they're actually doing is being spawned in from the middle of the camera and they're heading towards world origin. In this case, 000, which is right about here because that's the default value that is currently being left into the end point. This is also a chance to check whether your draw debug is on. If you're pressing your key and nothing appears to be happening and all of this is hooked up, check that your draw debug is on, otherwise you won't see anything. I can press the key, but all I want now to spawn in these line traces. To get the end point, we're going to need to do a little bit of vector maths. We take our camera reference, and we get its world rotation. What's its orientation in the world here? Now that we know which direction it's facing, we can get the forward vector from that rotation. And this will tell us now, uh, will, will give us a vector, which is a line with a magnitude of a magnitude of one, one centimeter in this case, pointing directly forward from the camera. So this got us the location of the camera, but its orientation was wrong. It was pointing in uh, an unpredictable way, or rather it's simply pointing in a way that we don't need. This vector is now pointing in the direction we need. But if I plug that into the end point, it won't be any use to us. These two are in almost exactly the same space in the world. They're just pointing in different directions. What we need to do is increase the magnitude of this forward vector. We need to make it longer so we can stretch it out into the world and interact with things. To do this, we need to create a variable. I'm going to call this the interaction distance and set that to be a float. How long you want your interaction distance to be will be up to you and your game. In this case, if I look at the player character here, the camera is attached to the camera boom arm, which is a spring arm. 
which has a length of 400 by default. It's 4 meters long. So I want my interaction distance to be at least 400, and then it's going to need to go out in front of the character by, say, 150, 200 units to give us a range in front of the character that we can interact with. So my interaction distance is going to be at least, say, 550. So it should reach past my character by one and a half meters. Take your interaction distance and multiply it by your forward vector. Sorry, I'm just going to rearrange these. Multiply it by the forward vector. This will now increase the length of this vector by our interaction distance. It will now have a very long magnitude, but in order to move it to the end point of this magnitude, we need to add the two vectors together. Take an add node and add your world location to this newly multiplied lengthened vector and plug that into the end location. If that confuses you, don't worry, it confuses me too. But I'll pause for a second here on the maths so that you can get this to work correctly. The common tripping points are the multiply and addition nodes. Make sure you haven't accidentally used two multiply nodes or two addition nodes, or this will not work. And make sure that the interaction distance here has a default value of higher than zero, or it will not work either. Let's test this out then. Now when I press my interaction key, the line traces appear from the middle of the camera, and they shoot forward past my player by one and a half meters. If you want to check to see uh, whether that's long enough for you, walk up to an object and stop a distance away and press your interaction key. In this case, that did not hit the wall. I need to move a bit closer, I need to move a bit closer, and when it does finally hit the wall, you will see this red square will appear. I need to get quite close to interact with things at this distance, so I'm going to actually increase that distance. I think I should don't need to be quite that close before I begin to touch things. I'm going to change the interaction distance from 550 to 600, compile the blueprint, save it, and try again. Now I'm actually able to hit the floor in front of myself, which was much harder to do before, and when I walk up to the wall and stop, I can hit it from further away, but it still feels like a good gameplay distance. Again, you can tweak this to your heart's content. These little red squares indicate that the line trace has hit something. Hit is registered by the line trace node, and the output of that hit is stored in this structure called an out hit event, an out hit structure. If you want to see all of the information that the out hit contains, right click on it and split the structure pin and you will see it takes a lot it actually contains a lot of different types of information the most useful one though is right in the center here out hit hit actor what is the other actor that the line trace hit and if you want to do a quick test add a print string node connect that up to the executionable and connect your out hit hit actor up to the print string this will now get the display name for that actor and print it out in the top left hand corner as a debug message. So you can look at the floor and it will tell you that that was a plane. I can look at this cube here. It tells me that that is a cube. I don't know if I can hit, yep, I can hit the end goal. It tells me that that is a goal. It tells me that this is a door. And it tells me that this is a button. So we are now able to start obtaining information about the world around us using camera-based positioning.